Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to go over the most common antidotes that you want to know as a nurse. And this video is part of an NCLEX review series over pharmacology and as always whenever you get done watching this YouTube video you can access the free quiz that will test you over these antidotes. So let's get started. What are antidotes? Well to help us understand that let's take this word apart. The prefix anti means against and dotes means to give. So when we put all that together, we get to give against. So antidotes are substances that we can give to work against some like toxicities or overdose or poisoning that is occurring in the body. Now what we're covering in this video are the 14 most common antidotes you want to know for your exams and whenever you're working as a nurse. It's always important like if you're going to be giving some heparin, warfarin, or digoxin, you want to know in the back of your mind, okay, what is that antidote in case my patient experiences toxicity? Because you want to be able to go and grab that fast. So first, let's talk about digoxin. So a patient can have what we call dig toxicity, and I talked in depth about digoxin in another review. So if a patient has this, this is a cardiac glycoside, what can we give to help reverse those effects? Well, it's really easy to remember. It's called digibind. So whenever you give that, they'll reverse the effects. Then we have heparin. Heparin is an anticoagulant, so it's a blood thinner. Now it's a fine balance between having a patient's blood too thin or too thick, but if they are having heparin like toxicity where they have too much on board we can give the antidote protamine sulfate and that will help reverse that then we have warfarin and you may hear this referred to as coumadin this is also an anticoagulant so it thins the blood an antidote for this is vitamin k definitely i remember those two then we have benzodiazepines and these are very strong sedative drugs that are highly addictive. A lot of their medication names end in PAM, P-A-M or LAM, L-A-M, such as diazepam and that's Valium. So if a patient takes too much of this, they can have adverse effects and we can give flumazenil. That's the antidote for those. And then we have opioids. Opioids just like benzos are highly addictive. They are painkillers and we're talking about drugs like morphine, fentanyl, etc. And we can give what's called naloxone for an antidote for that. And you've probably heard a lot about the opioid issues that we have here in the U.S. and Narcan, that's another name for this, we can give that to reverse the effects of opioids. Then we have acetaminophen, and here in the US, that is Tylenol. This is like a painkiller you can take over the counter. So if a patient takes too much of this, say they're trying to commit suicide, overdose, they, we can give them what's called acetylcysteine. And how I remember this antidote is that acetylcysteine has ACE in it, and so does acetaminophen. So those two go together, and that helps me remember that. Then we have beta blockers, and these are cardiac medications, and they end in LOL, like metoprolol or atenolol. And if a patient gets too much of that on board, toxicity with that, we can give them glucagon. And how I remember that is that with beta blockers, remember, they mask hypoglycemia. So glucagon, like glucose, that's how I keep those two straight. Then we have anticholinergic toxicity along with cholinergic toxicity. So these con two conditions are opposite of each other. So first, anticholinergic. So with this, this can be caused by like various medications that really affect those receptor sites and cause anticholinergic effects, but we have too much occurring in the body. So we're talking about like medications like antihistamines or atropine. So if that happens, we can give what's called physostigmine. Then on the flip side, we have cholinergic toxicity. And this can be caused by substances like organophosphates or carbamates. These are substances that are typically found in insecticides, pesticides, and they can be used to poison people. So to help reverse that, we can give atropine. Then we have magnesium sulfate. And we talked a lot about this drug in our OB lectures when we talked about preeclampsia. So an antidote for that is calcium gluconate. And if you plan on working in OB, I would definitely remember that antidote for magnesium sulfate. Next is cyanide poisoning. If a patient has this, an antidote is hydroxocobalamin. Then we have ethylene glycol or methanol. Now ethylene glycol is found in like antifreeze and methanol is found in like windshield wiper fluid. So you're probably thinking, how would a person get 
too much of this. Well, they could accidentally ingest it or intentionally ingest it, like trying to commit suicide, or maybe they were poisoned. Like ethylene glycol with the antifreeze, if you have ever watched those like forensic shows, there's a lot of cases where the person's being poisoned with antifreeze with this ethylene glycol. So um, antidotes for these are fomepazole. And then lastly, we have lead toxicity and iron toxicity. So lead toxicity, too much lead in the body. We can do what's called chelation therapy. And this is a method where we can remove those heavy metals from the bloodstream. So with lead, we can give like an oral um, chelation medication called succimer or calcium disodium edite, and that's via injection. Then with iron toxicity, an antidote for that is defroxamine. And with defroxamine, how I remember that is with iron. What's the atomic number for iron? Fe. So with this antidote, you have Fe in it, and that's how I remember its antidote. Okay, so that wraps up this review over the most common antidotes you want to know as a nurse. And as always, don't forget to check out that free quiz that will test you on these antidotes.